Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a few niche fragrances to share with you from So Avant Garde and So Avant Garde was kind enough to gift these to me but my opinions of course will always be my own and there are a couple of really nice scents in today's video and I'm going to be saving my favorite one for last. So the very last perfume that I'm going to talk about literally had my jaw on the floor. I loved it so much. It was just it's beautiful sweet gourmand if you like the same kind of perfumes as me you will definitely want to hear about this one and if you guys are interested in these or any other perfumes from so avant-garde you can use my discount code alithia15 to save 15% on your order I do want to apologize in advance I didn't realize until after the video and I went to edit that I had my camera must have been zoomed in the whole time so if the perfumes look a little closer to the camera then they usually do. I, for some reason, had the camera zoomed in. I do apologize for that. It will be better in the future. I'm not sure what happened, but it took me a long time to film this video, so I didn't want to completely redo the entire video. Um, so yeah, I do apologize for that. And if you guys are new to my channel, thank you for stopping by. My name is Alithia, and on this channel, we do talk a lot about perfume. If that's something you like, I would love if you would consider subscribing. And also head on over and follow me on Instagram if you want to see other little tidbits of my life, a little bit of behind-the-scenes footage, and just pretty shots of my room and perfumes and everything else so with that out of the way let's get started in these fragrances okay so the first perfume that was sent to me to try out for you guys is the x for women from clive christian so i'm fairly new to the house of clive christian and this one was randomly selected for me and had i seen the reviews of this one i might not have asked for this one just because a lot of people were comparing this to a designer scent that isn't really a favorite of mine but this one is quite nice actually so first of all, I want to give you guys kind of a close-up of this beautiful bottle. It has the little beautiful X on the front and really nice design. The bottle looks very sophisticated and very expensive and very posh. It has a really beautiful cap on it that says Clive Christian and overall it's just a really gorgeous presentation. And the notes that you have in here are peach, pineapple, rhubarb, mandarin orange, jasmine, orris root, rose, mignonette, lily of the valley, patchouli, musk, vanilla, french labdanum, and vetiver. So this is quite a loaded fragrance you guys and this is a very complex fragrance. At first sniff, it really did remind me a lot of Gucci Rush. If you guys are fans of Gucci Rush, which I think has been discontinued, I don't even know if you can get it anymore, but that was a very like synthetic kind of a, I don't know how to describe that one. It was a very like synthetic-y, almost play doh -y, but very sensual um, women's fragrance. It was the one that came in the really interesting like red rectangular plastic bottle. I don't know if you guys remember that one. That perfume for me was not a favorite. So when I looked at the notes and I saw that people were comparing this to Gucci Rush, I kind of was taken aback a little bit because that perfume for some reason just doesn't work out for me. There's something a little bit too synthetic about it and too odd and it's also a peach perfume, I believe, and a lot of perfumes that have peach as one of their main accords just does not work out for me. So let's go ahead and give this perfume a spray, and I'm going to let you know my thoughts on it. So there's another look at the bottle, and let's go ahead and give this guy a spray. And as always, my kitchen table is going to be full of perfume when we're done. <laughs> Okay, so you guys, this is actually such a beautiful perfume, and the more that I smell it, the more that I like it. Like I said, when I first sprayed it, it really reminded me a lot of Gucci Rush, which I was kind of taken aback because, like I said, I don't love that perfume, but there is something so clean and smooth about this one. Gucci Rush, for me, was a little bit sharp and a little bit, I don't know, there was just something about it that was kind of like screechy. I didn't really love that one. That's why I didn't keep it. I would say that this one smells kind of like Gucci Rush's richer older sister or like more sophisticated older sister a little bit smoother a little bit more floral as well and it just smells higher quality than gucci rush it's actually a very hard perfume to describe it's it's not really sweet it's kind of like a little bit powdery i don't know it's a little bit powdery a little bit fruity a little bit vanilla and it does have this like strange almost medicinal plasticky quality about it but in a really good way i don't really know how to describe it i don't know it just smells really unique 
I will say that this lasted for a good amount of time on my skin. I got probably six or seven hours on my skin and it lasted even longer on clothing. The notes that stand out to me the most in here are definitely the peach, the patchouli, and the pineapple. And then like I said, I do get this like powdery vanilla touch in the dry down. It's a very, very unique perfume, not in the sense that it doesn't smell like anything else because it does smell like Gucci Rush, but it's unique in the sense that um, the scent profile itself is very interesting and unique. It's like it's a very different type of scent profile. It's very elegant. It's a little bit sexy. It smells kind of like Gucci Rush's more sophisticated, smoother, older sister. A little bit more floral, um, not quite as screechy to me, to my nose, as the Gucci Rush's, although I think they're both nice. But like I said, personally for me, just because Gucci Rush wasn't a favorite perfume, this isn't, I wouldn't say this is like a favorite perfume of mine. Like I don't, I'm not jumping out of my chair for this one. It's nice. And if you liked Gucci Rush, I think it's definitely worth checking out. I would say that this one has maybe a little bit more character sort of than Gucci Rush does. Yeah, this would be one to definitely check out. It has like this dark oriental mystery to it in addition to being like fruity and very floral. Also for me personally, because this is a very like peach forward fragrance and peach doesn't always work with me with my skin chemistry, like I said, I can't say it is an absolute favorite. For me personally, and I will always be honest with you guys, no matter what perfumes I'm sent, even if they are from expensive houses, even if they're gifted to me for free, I will always be perfectly honest with you guys. So for myself, I can't say that this is like a favorite. It's not something that I jump out of my seat for. But if you liked Gucci Rush, this is definitely one to check out. And if you want something that's very kind of mysterious and regal smelling and sophisticated and has good performance, this is definitely one to check out. Okay, the next perfume is Lucretia from Vicanto by Terenzi. So this is a house that I am completely new to. I have heard great things about this house. The bottles are amazing. And I've really, really wanted to try some perfumes from this house. And I have two of them in today's video, you guys. This one is my less favorite. I'm going to share with you my favorite one at the end. And that one is one of my new favorite perfumes currently, one of my absolute new favorite perfumes. So definitely stay tuned until the end. But let's talk a little bit about Lucretia. So I do hope that I'm pronouncing that properly. And this is kind of a close up of the bottle. So you have this beautiful red velvet packaging, and then you have the Vicanto on the top and a beautiful cap. Really, really beautiful packaging all in all with these Vicanto bottles. So the notes that you have in this one are pear, lime blossom, pink pepper, pettigrain, laurel, jasmine, coffee, cacao, amber, and cloves. And in the base you have vanilla, honeysuckle, benzoin, patchouli, and cedar. So let's go ahead and give this one a spray. All right, and this one I actually do have on my skin already and I have worn it. So I can give you guys an idea as to the performance and also how it wears on the skin. Okay, so this has a very fruity, sweet opening. Oh my gosh, it is so, it is so beautiful in the opening. Oh, it's so pretty. It has this beautiful, like sweet pear opening. And this perfume definitely does smell a little bit similar to black opium. And when I was looking on Fragrantica, a lot of people compared this to black opium, but this is quite different. This is more different from black opium than the previous one I was talking about is to Gucci Rush. I can see why people compare the two. This one does have a lot of jasmine. It has a lot of coffee. You also have some cacao in there. So there's this bit of like a chocolatey background in it. And then you also have vanilla, honeysuckle, and benzoin. The honeysuckle makes it a little bit more unique because the dry down is not like a sugary, syrupy, sweet coffee the way that black opium is. Black opium is very like, and don't get me wrong, I love black opium. Black opium is very much like sweet, seductive, kind of clubby, sexy, and just a very sweet like pear, jasmine, coffee, vanilla, which I love. I love that scent profile and that's probably why I like this one, but this one, it's just a little bit different. It's a little bit more unique. It's a little bit more complex. And what really strikes me about this one is it is soapy, in my opinion. In my opinion, this is a soapier, cleaner version of Black Opium. It also reminds me a little bit of Maison Margiela's Bubble Bath from Replica. If you like Bubble Bath from Replica and if you like Black Opium, this is kind of like those two scents marry. This is like the best of both worlds especially once you get this on skin. This changes a lot on skin and it becomes even soapier on me. 
I think it must be that petty grain coming through and also the honeysuckle. There's also a little bit of patchouli. Um, there's a little bit of a spiciness in here. Stunning. So I'm going to be honest with you guys. When I first wore this, I was thinking, I don't know how much I like this. Like I was like, it's very similar to black opium, but it's kind of clean. And I kind of like the sweetness that I get from black opium. Like I said, this is a lot soapier, but and I do have it on my skin. So on the paper, it's pulling a lot more soapy. The deep dry down of this perfume, you guys, is a delicious, like, oh, it's like a delicious, creamy, benzoin vanilla. It's kind of like a little bit more of that soapiness that I was getting that kind of reminded me of bubble bath has dissipated now. And now it's more of this creamy vanilla and it doesn't smell like black opium in the dry down. So if you look at reviews on Fragrantica and people are saying, you know, it's so similar to black opium, honestly, it's quite different. Oh, you guys, the dry down of this is beautiful. It's really, really nice. If you liked Maison Margiela's bubble bath. And if you liked black opium, this is one to definitely check out because it's kind of like the two of those fragrances meshed and married and had a baby. And this is what you get. It's a little bit more floral. It's a little bit more sophisticated. There's a greenness to it. There's a classiness to it. I don't like to describe a perfume simply by comparing it to another perfume. Cause I feel like that's kind of cheating. Like you're not really describing it. You're just saying it smells like this. But, but I also know that there's a lot of people out there who don't really get notes and they're like, I don't know what pink pepper smells like. I don't know what petty grain smells like. I don't know what, you know, cloves or amber or benzoin smells like. So I find it's really helpful to help people understand what a perfume smells like by comparing it to something a little in that vein. And the way that I would describe this, you guys, is if Black Opium was the girl who went out to the club the night before and she was really kind of flirty and sexy and seductive, this is the girl the next morning when she's gone home and taken a shower and used the most luxurious clean soap and then she went out for brunch. This is kind of like, oh, this is kind of like, yeah, this is just like the cleaner, fresher, soapier version of Black Opium. It's really, really nice. And I really like it. I like this one a lot better than the Clive Christian X for Woman. So that is Lucrethia from Vicanto by Terenzi. Okay, so the next fragrance is from the house Mind Games. And this is a new house to me. I actually hadn't heard of it before. And So Avant Garde was kind enough to send me the entire discovery set of Mind Games. And I will be doing a comprehensive Mind Games review for you guys and telling you which fragrances are personally my favorite, which ones I think are some of the most beautiful. There was definitely a couple from the line that I really liked, but this was by far one of my favorites. There's a couple others that I really, really liked, but I have to give them a little bit more time and play with them a little bit more. But this one I love, it is so beautiful. And this is very different from the last couple of fragrances. This is a woody green powdery fragrance and this one is called Castling. This is what you will get if you check into their discovery. So you get these beautiful bottles with quite a generous amount of the fragrance and it has this little like crown on the top. And what I think is really interesting about this whole house is that it sort of centers around the game of chess. So they have a lot of different fragrances that are named after like part of a chess game. So they have like double attack or checkmate, things like that. So it's kind of unique. And this one is called Castling, like I said. This is one of the more feminine fragrances. All of the fragrances seemed to be quite unisex, but there was a couple more that were a little bit more on the feminine side. And this is definitely one of the more feminine ones. So if you're looking for a more feminine fragrance from Mind Games, this is definitely one to check out. And for those of you who love fig fragrances, if you like fig, you guys, if you like vanilla, if you like iris, if you like powdery perfumes, if you want something that will make you smell expensive during the summertime, this is one that you definitely have to check out. It is so beautiful. So the notes that you have in here are fig leaf, bergamot, sea salt, iris, lotus, freesia, sandalwood, musk, Madagascar vetiver, vanilla, and woodsy notes. You guys, this perfume jumped out at me immediately when I was testing out the discovery set. This was one of the very first ones that I was like, oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. So let's go ahead and give this one a spray. And again, this is kind of what the atomizer looks like. So you do get quite a generous amount, which gives you a really good opportunity to test everything out as well as bring it with you on vacation if you wanted to. This is a perfect, perfect vacation scent, by the way. And the atomizer is super pretty. Oh my gosh, you guys, this, 
Oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. This is so beautiful. Okay, so for those of you who like a little bit of creamy sandalwood, a little bit of vanilla, and you like a green fig, and you also like powdery. This is feminine, although I could see a man wearing it if he really wanted to, but I do feel like this leans probably, I would say like, personally, I would say like 80% feminine. And it is just gorgeous. It is just gorgeous. So again, for those of you who don't really know what notes kind of smell like, fig is like a very creamy green note. And then you have this creamy sandalwood in there as well. And then you have iris, which makes it a little bit powdery, sort of like a makeup compact or a lipstick, something like that. And then you also have lotus and freesia. Lotus and freesia are very like light aquatic watery florals. So this also has like a light aquatic touch to it as well. And in the opening, you also have a little bit of bergamot and sea salt. So this kind of lends itself to being sort of almost like a retreat, like a vacation, like a resort type of perfume. To me, this conjures up images of a beautiful woman in a white linen sundress sitting on a yacht somewhere, living her best life or sitting on a beach somewhere. And the first perfume that this one really reminds me of is Santal Blanc from Van Cleef and Arpels. However, this is an extrait de parfum, and this one has better performance than Santal Blanc from Van Cleef and Arpels. Van Cleef and Arpels Santal Blanc is gorgeous. They're very much along the same lines. I do think that uh, the Van Cleef and Arpels had maybe a fruity touch in the opening, if I'm not mistaken, and I think that one had coconut too. I'm not 100% sure, but this one is, oh my gosh, this is so pretty. This is like a green, powdery, woody, feminine, seaside makeup compact sort of. It's just like, it's like you're dusting your face with a beautiful like makeup powder, but you're also sitting on a beach somewhere really luxurious and really beautiful and you're just living your best life in the summertime. Absolutely stunning, you guys. This is so beautiful. I actually haven't had a chance to put this one on skin, so let's go ahead and do that together right now because it always smells a little bit different on skin than it does on paper. It's kind of giving me a little bit Philosicos almost from Diptyque. Um, if you've ever smelled Philosicos, that is a very true like green, woody, fig fragrance. The difference I would say is that this one has more of a this one's like a little bit more aquatic. You really do get more of those kind of watery florals, which makes it a little bit more feminine and very light. I found Philosicos for me personally to be a little bit too woody for me personally. Like I just couldn't wear that one. I liked it, but I couldn't wear it. This one for me, I'm getting, I don't know. I also get a little bit of that salt on my skin. This kind of smells like I was just in the ocean for the day as well. Like I was in the ocean and I'm wearing a beautiful white linen sundress and I've got this beautiful powder, this makeup compact powder, and the sun is shining down on me. And it's just such a, it's just such a pretty perfume, you guys. Like I, I love this perfume. It's gorgeous. Like I said, the other great thing about the Mind Games perfumes is that they are extrait de parfum. So you are getting a higher concentration of perfume oil, which means usually they are a little bit longer lasting and a little bit stronger. So pretty, so pretty. <laughs> so this is beautiful. Definitely check it out if you are into fig fragrances. I 10 out of 10 recommend this one. Okay guys, and as promised, I have saved my favorite one from today's haul for last. And this is Mirabile from Vicanto by Terenzi. I, I hope I'm pronouncing that properly. I don't know if I am. I have never heard anybody talk about this perfume. I'm sure somebody out there has talked about it but I've never heard anybody talk about it. And this was a complete like fluke discovery. I had no idea if I was gonna like it. I took a look at the notes, the notes looked nice. Um, it was a new discovery for me. Like I said, I'm totally new to the house of Vicanto by Terenzi. This perfume, you guys, I could not stop smelling it when I first sprayed it. It blew my mind. I was in shock over how much I liked this perfume. This is a close-up of the bottle, so it has the beautiful Vicanto on the top, really unique kind of cap there, and then it is a beautiful blue suede. It's in this really unique shaped bottle, very, very luxurious and very substantial looking bottle, and this would look beautiful sitting on a perfume tray. I also like the color. Um, the color goes with all the stuff in my bedroom, so I really like it. <laughs> And this perfume, you guys, is for my vanilla lovers, my sweet lovers, my gourmand lovers, the people who like all the vanilla perfumes, the people who like a little bit of tonka bean, they like a little bit of maybe a lactonic quality. So the notes that you have in Mirabile are vanilla, 
malt, and a poppinax in the opening. In the middle, you have rum, milk, and buchu, or aga, agathosma. I'm not sure what that is. I think it's a herb of some sort. Lavender, bourbon, geranium, which is interesting. Rose, vanilla, absolute, tonka bean, cloves, patchouli, and white musk. So to be honest, those notes make this perfume sound like it could go in a thousand directions. It could be very green and herbal. It could be a little bit spicy. It could be kind of boozy. It could be really milky, or it could be just like super vanilla and gourmand. And let's go ahead and give this perfume a spray because I haven't smelled it in a couple days and I'm dying to spray this again because it just completely blew my mind. Okay, I'm super excited to spray this, you guys. Like I said, it is a very sweet perfume and it's beautiful and I just sniffed it at the atomizer again and wow, you guys, this perfume, like this was a love at first sniff. This was a 10 out of 10 at first sniff. Okay, let's go, let's spray it. <laughs> okay, so that first spray, I'm getting vanilla and a milkiness and a sweetness and also a little bit of a rummy, boozy quality oh my gosh you guys oh my goodness you guys this is so <laughs> this is so good so it's a little bit spicy it's a little bit rummy and boozy just in the opening i don't find that that sticks around too long there's it's so sweet you do have to like sweet perfumes to like this you have to like sweet in terms of like i don't know if you've ever tried love and crimes exe dolo that kind of like sweet, sugary, orangey, chocolatey vanilla. You need to like something very, very sweet. This doesn't smell like a boozy, dark rum. It's a very elevated, sweet, bright, rummy. And I wouldn't say that rum is like the most prominent note in here. Definitely the vanilla for me is the most prominent note. It has just the right amount of like a floral component. Usually I'm not a huge fan of geranium, but for some reason in here, the geranium is beautifully blended. It just gives it this little bit of a complex floral, almost, I don't want to say bitter component, but it just balances out the sweetness. You've got those herbal notes in here. You've got the patchouli, you've got the cloves, and you've got a little bit of musk, just enough to kind of balance out what would otherwise be a super sweet, milky fragrance. So there is a note of milk in here. Don't let that put you off. If you're somebody who doesn't like milky notes, or if you get nauseated from like milky lactonic fragrances, I know some people can. This doesn't smell like a milky, nauseating type of thing. I don't know if you've ever tried Blanche Bette from Liquides Imaginaires. I blind bought that one. That type of lactonic milkiness did not work for me, but the milkiness that's in here does work for me. It's also a little bit kind of relaxing. There is a little bit of lavender in here. I would say if you like things like Lyra from Zerjoff, um, I personally wasn't a fan of Italica, but if you liked Italica, if you've ever smelled Mazzolari Vanilla, if you've ever smelled Exidolo Love and Crime, um, those kind of very sweet, sort of floral, faceted, but very, very sweet fragrances that are almost like sugary sweet, like love don't be shy kind of sweet. This is something you would like. It's so good. And that rum that's in there gives it like this sexy nighttime quality. So it's a little bit spicy, a little bit boozy, but not too much. Okay, so I do have it on my arm, just up closer to my elbow because I'm running out of skin to dry perfumes. Okay, so the opening is definitely a little bit more, like I said, boozy, rummy, and a little spicy. You do get sort of that malt feeling, that malt like sensation, that rum. You get a little bit of like a spice. It's almost a little bit herbal, but it is very sweet. You're getting still a lot of vanilla in the opening, so you do have to like sort of a rummy spiciness in order to like this. If you don't like a spicy perfume, like if you're not crazy about like cinnamon, cloves, that type of thing, um, this one might not be for you. And as it starts to dry down, it becomes more about that tonka bean and that vanilla and a little, it's still a little spicy. It retains that spice throughout. Oh my gosh. It's so, it's so sweet and delicious. You guys, it is so sweet and delicious. Okay. This, this is right up there for me in terms of like how beautiful it is and how much I like it right up with something like Memo Sintra, which I think is a mind blowing fragrance. I think Memo Sintra is one of the most beautiful gourmand perfumes. This is right up there for me in terms of it's in the same ballpark. It gives the same vibe, but it's a different scent. If you like Memo Sintra, if you like Love Don't Be Shy, Exi Dolo Love and Crime, if you like those kind of sweet vanilla, very, very sweet, super addictive, like Moorish fragrances, this is one to try. 
It's one that I just want to keep sniffing over and over and over. It just smells so good. Oh, it just, it just smells so good. You guys, it smells so good. So yeah, this is one you definitely do need to try. I think is definitely worth getting your nose on. And this one is definitely, yeah, this one is definitely my favorite from today's haul. I 10 out of 10 recommend this one. Um, Ooh, she's, she's good. She's addictive. Oh my goodness. I'm yeah, I love this. So this is my favorite hands down from today's haul. It smells like sort of a boozy, desserty kind of a drink with a ton of vanilla. It's just so beautiful. And I would even say this would be like signature scent worthy. Like, you know how they said that Rihanna smells so good because she wore love. Don't be shy. This is something that you could wear if you wanted to be known as that person who always smells good. It just smells so good. So this one I definitely think is worth checking out. Just remember you do have to like a boozy kind of a spicy vanilla and a little bit of a lactonic quality, but it's not like a nauseatingly like rich milky quality. It okay just... guys, let's just do a quick recap here. So we have, which one should we start with? So the Clive Christian X feminine edition or X for woman. This one I think is worth checking out. If you enjoyed something like Gucci rush, if you want something that's very unique, very regal smelling, very interesting, um, a little bit synthetic -y, very peach dominant. If you like that kind of vibe and you want something very unique that not everybody is going to be wearing um, and has really good performance, this is a good one to check out. You guys, I can't get over how good my kitchen smells at the moment. Um, it just, it smells so good in here. And I think it's from the last like two perfumes I sprayed. It smells so good. So that is the Clive Christian X for Women. Not a personal favorite, but still worth checking out if you like that kind of scent profile. I would encourage you to get a sample if you can because it is quite pricey. Um, then we also have Lucrethia from Vicanto by Terenzi. And this is the one that is sort of like that cleaner, soapier, more sophisticated, like daytime version of black opium. Not so sweet, not so sugary, not so coffee. Um, I actually still have the dry down on my arm. And the dry down is stunning, you guys. The dry down is beautiful. You get a lot of that benzoin. This one is Castling from Mind Games. I absolutely love this, you guys. This is one of the most beautiful, like, green fig fragrances with a little bit of powder. This just smells expensive and luxurious and perfect for summertime, and it's so beautiful. And it really does smell very classy, very elegant, um, perfect for the summertime, perfect for women in the spring and summer. Yeah, it's so it's so pretty. It has that like it has that like elevated powdery green sunny fig component, if you know what I'm talking about. If you like fig perfumes, you know what I'm talking about. And this one just smells it just oh, it just smells so nice, you guys. Like I love that. I love that perfume. It's so pretty. And then we have kind of mm, it smells so nice. The dry down on my arm is amazing. Then we have kind of the star of the show today. This is the one that I really, really like felt head over heels in love with when I first smelled it. And this is the Mirabile from Vicanto. And this one is your spicy kind of milky vanilla, slightly boozy fragrance. And it truly smells good enough to eat or drink. It is delicious. So those are the perfumes in today's video, you guys. And I smell really darn good right now um, with all of these, all of these fragrances on me. I'm just obsessed. I'm just obsessed. It smells so good. Um, obviously, my favorite one from today's video is the Mirabile. Second to that would be the Mind Games. Third to that would be the Lucrethia. And fourth to that would be the Clive Christian X. It just goes to show that you don't always have to get the most hyped up house. Clive Christian has a lot of hype, I feel like, especially lately. There's been a lot of people talking about Clive Christian. Um, but you know, I just really, really like this Mind Games one a lot. And I also really love this um, Mirabile. If you guys have tried that one, definitely let me know down below. Also, if there's any other perfumes from Mind Games or Clive Christian or Vicanto that you recommend that I check out, if we have similar tastes, I would love to hear from you. Don't forget that you can use my code down below if you're looking for a discount on samples or on bottles of fragrances from So Avant Garde. And yeah, that's it for today's perfume video. So that was it for today's video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Again, let me know down below if any of these piqued your interest or if you've tried any of them. And don't forget that if you're interested in these or anything else from the So Avant Garde website, you can use my discount code Alithia15. Everything will be linked down below. And I'll see you guys all very soon. Bye for now.